Hey community, Yarrow here, and today I am hanging out with a powerful people plant. Another one of these medicines that is long lost and forgotten about, but is really worth connecting with. Do you know what this is? This is an alder tree, and alder is a sacred medicine of the Northlands, but it grows in abundance all over the world. It loves to have wet feet, and actually it's a nitrogen fixer. This plant has a lot of benefit for the environment around us. So it's one that comes into these areas after a burn or after a flood or something along this line where the, the ecology, the system has been disturbed, and it builds up new soils. It actually pulls out atmospheric nitrogen, fixes it into the earth, and creates all this lush greenery around it. And then it dies back really quickly, making uh, fertilizer for the big trees to grow in. So really what this is, is a community builder in the world of plants. It's one of those early adopters that can really morph and change its way of showing up into many different types of environment. Now because of this, we see that in the Norse mythology, this has a bit of a Loki medicine. It's got that energetic of Loki. It's kind of a trickster plant. You'll also see that the ravens love hanging out on it. So there's a bit of a magical essence to this plant, calling in the trickster to change or shift up the ecosystem. This is also similar to how it works in our body. And that's one of the clues, that kind of doctrine of signature of how, or doctrine of correspondence of how it shows up in the environment to how it might work in our body. But let's make sure we have the right tree because there's a bunch of trees in this family. It's in the Betulin, ah, Betulaceae family, I think it is, with the birch tree. So it has some of the betulinic acids and some of that type of compound. There's a bit of salicylic acid in it, so it helps numb pain to a degree, but it's not like a willow tree or uh, anything along this line, like a cottonwood. It's got more of those tannins in the bark. But really, you'll see leaves that are similar to hazelnut or similar to birch. They have this elliptical oval shape. They're serrated around the edges and they've actually got a kind of almost a corrugated feel to them. They're also quite sticky in the spring. And like the rest of this family, here's a plant that shows up with a lot of medicine in it. And it has male and female parts. So it has catkins and cones. The catkins are the male part that produces pollen and the cones are the female part that receives the pollen. Of course, it's wind blown, but what we see is that this produces a lot of pollen and a lot of seeds, very small, fine seeds that can travel quite far and will grow very, very quickly, quite rapidly. So it's just a great plant to really restore the balance, like I was saying before. All right, elliptical leaves, kind of sticky. It's got this Nice soft bark uh, that's very smooth when it's young, but it starts to break up and crack apart. You can start to see maybe down a little lower, this one's starting to crack apart as it gets older. Sometimes these old ones, even this is like a fairly small tree, but the old ones uh, rot very quickly when they're on the ground. So that's part of that nitrogen fixing piece. The other thing about this though, is if you actually stick this tree in water, it hardens. So it likes to grow in these wet areas. So it'll grow where lots of other trees won't grow, right in the wet soil. But it was also used for boat making because of this, because you could actually harden the wood in water. So it was commonly used especially in the Norse culture of building boats. The other thing that alder was used for commonly was for smelting metal. It is used as a firewood because it burns really, really hot and it doesn't spark. It doesn't have a lot of spit or resins in it. So this is a great wood that's also ruled by fire. Shifting the environment, building back and restoring the ecosystem and creating healthy plant communities. This is a big part of the medicine of alder on the planet. It comes into these inflamed areas, these disturbed soils, and grows quickly into these abundant forests that then fall back down and build up more nitrogen and build up more ecosystem stability. This plant does a lot of work in this way. And in some ways it's considered a magical plant because of how it just shows up like that in the environment. We also see that this is a medicinal plant because it has those same benefits in our body. It's astringent and toning to the skin. It tightens the tissues. It also has a bit of a blood cleansing, alternative and lymphatic cleansing aspect to it. Plus it's mucilaginous, so it's soothing. It's got a lot of these 
really beneficial qualities for an inflamed body. So if you find yourself in a inflamed state in some form, some capacity, this might be one of those medicines you want to look towards. Before we get into the therapeutic benefits of alder specifically, I want to talk about the parts you'd use as medicine, because this is where the chemistry is. This is where the magic in this plant is. So like many plants, the growing tips are often the best medicine. So in the spring here, these young shoots and leaves are perfect to be harvesting. You also find that the bark on the growing edge, this cambium layer here on the bark, is also a really powerful medicine. Even just giving it a nibble, I can taste that medicine in it. I can taste that astringency, that, that toning effect of it. We'll also find, because of that, the growing tips. And like many plants, the sexual reproductive parts act as part of that medicine too. So I'm gonna be looking towards these little catkins, I've got some in my basket, and these cones as part of my medicine too. So when we're going to make medicine with alder, again, the best thing to think about is where is the energy of the plant? In this case, it's in the growing tips and it's in the catkins and the bark and the cones. Harvesting leaves, cones, and catkins is easy and intuitive. You just try to do as little damage as you can to the plant, but you know that you're not gonna hurt the plant all that much by harvesting these parts. But when it comes to harvesting the bark, on the other hand, that's where we have to be a little more careful because if we cut a ring around this tree, we've cut off the blood flow and actually killed the tree. So we wanna do this gently and respectfully because we can really damage a tree this way. So one way to do that is just to harvest a single branch and then take all the bark from there. Or another way to do that is to cut strips down versus along. So in this case, I'll give you an example. We might cut a strip just down the bark like so, maybe taking two or three strips from the same spot if we're gonna harvest off of a main stem like that just like so. And what we're really looking for in this is the cambium layer. Now, I wanted to do this for two reasons. I wanna show you this medicine as it changes, because here's some of the magical quality of this. This is red alder, and it starts to shift and turn to this bright red color as the bark dries. So I've got some from a couple of days ago here, which is dried and turned bright red. This will eventually turn red too. And there's an old myth around this, how woodcutters would cut this tree and they would see it bleeding and not want to cut it again, thinking it had some human qualities or some animal-like qualities. Anyway, it's just part of the mythos around this powerful medicine. And really, in that inner cambium layer, in that red part, is where a lot of the medicine is. Medicinally speaking, alder is immunostimulating, which means it helps to turn on the white blood cells and get our whole body on the fight for, hey, something's in our system that we need to get rid of. It's also got some antiviral, antifungal, and antipathogenic in general properties. So it's good for helping with infections of all different types. This could be an infected wound, or this could actually be a fungal or bacterial infection or a viral infection on the skin or in the body. Externally, we would make it into a wash. So we might take the bark and the leaves and do a decoction and then make a rinse. So we might put that on with a sponge bath or actually get in a bathtub with a bunch of alder in it or you know something along this line. We would use that if it's going to be something like eczema or weeping eczema is a classic one because it's astringent so tightening the tissues. Psoriasis or any of these types of things. If there's wound care that's needed we might make a salve topically by doing it in an oil and put that on externally and it has those same properties and if it's something that's an infection on the skin we would do either a liniment would be the best way we might do a sponge bath as well and turn into a very loose liquid that could be put on specific areas things that we'd use it for that way would be like scabies or lice these are classic things that alder was used for also crabs or any kind of pathogen like that anything like that even a fungal foot infection you might use this for it's also classically used externally for things like sore feet and sore hands it's got anti-pain, uh, I guess analgesic properties, that are gonna help it work with numbing the pain of arthritis or rheumatism. So this would be great for those tightened, sore joints. We'd also see this for sore feet from running too much. So one of the classic medicines in the spring that First Nation cultures of this part of the world would do was they would make a foot bath where they'd use 
toning astringent herbs like alder and uva ursi and other herbs like that in a bath where they'd put their feet in it to tighten the tissues of their feet to strengthen them so they could walk barefoot in the summer. Aha! Here's an idea you might want to try at home, is if you like to get out and barefoot garden, well make yourself an astringent tea to soak your feet in at nighttime. Internally, alder has a lot of benefits for the body as well. In TCM, it's considered to transform the fluids, which means it's useful for the digestive juices and bile, but also as an alternative for the blood and for cleansing the lymphatic system. So great for things like tonsillitis, or any kind of inflamed lymph nodes, and just to kind of clear out toxic load from the body in general. Again, that immunostimulating effect is gonna help move out what no longer serves us. We might make this into a gargle. One of the classic medicines it was used for is for pain in the mouth, for sores, for canker sores, for gums that are infected. We might use an alder tea as a gargle, as a mouth rinse. You can also use it just to change the ecosystem. If we're classically getting a lot of infections, well, this might be one of those medicines we can just chew on alder twigs or bark or make a tea with it. I often, even just when I'm in the forest, I might take a little piece of alder and just nibble away at the cambium there. I just love nibbling on plants like that anyway. It makes me feel sophisticated. A little bit in here, just hmm, thinking about it like I was smoking a pipe. Hmm, yes, life is amazing. But we see that this medicine also has benefits for the whole digestive tract as that anti-inflammatory. So we make a tea with it, it's gonna help combat inflammation, especially if our microbiome is, we have dysbiosis or some kind of SIBO or internal microbiological infection like Candida. Uh, this might be a medicine for a short period of time. Again, any of these antibacterial, antipathogenic plants are slightly anti-life. So we take it for too long, it's not gonna be good for our good gut bacteria. The other thing to note is that fresh alder has a bit of an emetic effect if we take too much of it. So it might make us vomit if we take too much fresh alder. And it can have a slight laxative effect if we take too much of it. So it's great for diarrhea and for constipation that it helps move out the diarrhea and often clean and heal the ecosystem internally, but it can also help work as a laxative for uh, constipation. So I know that might sound gross, we start talking about coming out the other end, but this is a medicine that just really supports the whole digestive process in general, especially when there's imbalances down there. So one of the reasons I wanted to make this video and why I was so excited to talk about alder today is because here's a medicine that is very promising for something that is a powerful pathogen on our planet. Alder has a lot of antiviral properties, and in fact, it has been used for things like HIV and cold sores and a number of other viruses. It was originally studied around SARS as a potential because of the way it worked with the cytokine storm effect. So now, in the last year, a lot more science has been dedicated to this plant, especially in China and in Japan, to research its ability to work with the coronavirus. This is huge. Much of the medicine in here, the betulins and some of the other protein like peptides, a bunch of other stuff in this plant that is potent and antiviral is being looked at and how it has a capacity to work with acute respiratory illnesses around this. So not to prevent you from getting corona, but really to help if somebody has these type of symptoms at a onset of this disease. Anyway, I'll link some of the scientific studies because there's a bunch out there right now around showing how this could be useful. And I just think it's one of those medicines that we need to talk more about these plants that can help when we have imbalances. Again, here's a plant that works with major imbalances in our ecosystem and has the ability to restore a healthy immune system and support us with antiviral properties. So anyway, if you've heard about this effect with alder, about it working with the coronavirus, or even if you've started to use it in any form that way, I'd love for you to share in the comments because I think this is a way in which our herbal community can grow is by the anecdotal evidence of each other and building stronger community voice around working with different medicines. We can't just rely on the science. We can't just rely on the folklore. We can't rely on any of it to be a full truth. Really, where we start to get a more well-rounded appreciation for plants is when we look at it from the holistic spectrum, from the whole perspective of our community's involvement, of our science involvement, and of the folklore and traditional use around these plants. So we have a plant that's been used 
for antiviral properties. It's immunostimulating. It's got great chemistry. It shuts down cytokine storm effects, and it's now being studied heavily for this. This just might be one to add to your repertoire when it comes to getting sick, not just with corona, but if that was the case too. If we're looking for the antiviral properties of alder and some of those immunostimulating effects, we're gonna to wanna to make this into a tincture. Many of the active compounds are alcohol soluble. So that's how we're gonna really capture and distill the best out of this medicine. We're also gonna to wanna to work with those growing edges and the bark. If we're gonna use dried bark like this, which is easy, we'll make it into a 40 to 50% alcohol tincture. If we're gonna use fresh plant parts, we're gonna use 75% to compensate for the water in it. If we wanna use this as medicine, again, just like regular tinctures, we macerate it for at least two weeks, strain it, shake it off, make it into a dropper, and then we're gonna take usually two milliliters two to three times a day. If we wanna make this into a tea, we're gonna to need to drink at least two to three cups of this tea, and we wanna do a decoction. Now, of course, there are other ways to make this, like the liniment and the scrubs and baths and gargles and all that kind of stuff, but really, all in all, here is a medicine for our time that is easy and grows around us in abundance. It's one that many people don't use and it's underappreciated. A lot of people think of this as a garbage tree, but it has so much benefit for the ecosystem. One of my favorite things about this plant is that it actually grows some of the best oyster mushrooms in the West Coast environment. So we often will cut this down and we'll grow out shiitake logs or oysters or turn it into a food forest, but we'll also use it is a hugel culture underneath our garden beds and just offer up more nitrogen to the soil. It's got so much mythos and old world medicine around it, ruled by Loki, energetics of fire and water, and just such an ecosystem restorer, a plant medicine for the people of our time, of the ages. Here is one that you should be looking to for any kind of pathogenic issue in your body, especially on the skin, but also internally in the digestive system. Anyway, I hope you got a bit out of this video and learning about alder medicine, an underappreciated plant of our time. Thanks for joining me, and let me know in the comments below some of your uses or if you've ever worked with this plant. Ciao for now. Brrr.